Hello students, welcome to our online video tutorial class. So I think you have seen the previous videos, whatever I have made on the chapter that is living world. And I think all of the queries are actually, which are present from, their cha from that chapter, everything is cleared by seeing those videos. So today I have decided that I will be starting the next chapter that is the biological classification. So in this chapter, whatever we have to study, we have to study about the various kind of kingdoms. Okay, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. About their characteristic features, about their various kinds of uh, body structures, as well as we will be discussing about various kinds of physiological systems of those organisms. Even the classification of each and every kingdom also we will be discussing in this chapter. So let's start. First, in this chapter, we have to discuss about what is biological classification. We all know that from the first chapter, we actually come to know that the classification is the mechanism by which any specific group of organisms will be segregated or differentiated into multiple small small groups or categories. And we are placing each and every organism in different different group or different different category. So that is commonly known as classification. And this classification system first it was started by the father of taxonomy that is Carolus Linnaeus. Because in the taxonomy only it has been told that arrangement rule of the organisms. And with, when we have talked about or when we have discussed about the arrangement rule of the organisms obviously we have seen there classification is one step. So obviously when we will try to classify any organism obviously we have to categorize that organism either into domains or either into the kingdoms. So in the first chapter we have seen about the three domain concept which was proposed by Carl Hus and there we have seen that he has differentiated the all of the organisms including animal, plants, microorganisms into three different kingdom, kingdoms. Archaea, Bacteria and Eukarya and after that three domain concept the classification mechanism has getting little bit advanced. So that advancement of the classification mechanism we will be discussing now. Okay. First we can see here evolutionary history of the biological classification. First we will be discussing about the evolutionary history of the biological classification. First the concept or the classification system which was evolved after three domain concept that is two kingdom classification. Here. Carolus Linnaeus, he, he, has, he has actually proposed this specific classification mechanism. He has told that the, all of the organisms present in the world, they can be classified into two different kingdoms. Because he has no idea about the presence of microorganisms. He has only got about the information about plants and animals. That's why he has created two kingdoms only, plants and animals, plantae and animalia. Specifically based on the mode of nutrition as well as presence of cell wall or absence of cell wall, based on these two features only, he has classified the organisms into two kingdoms. Again, I am repeating based on the mode of nutrition and presence or absence of the cell wall, based on these two features only, he has created or he has proposed this two kingdom classification system. Clear? This two kingdom classification system has been modified into three kingdom classification system. Where we can see with the plantae and animalia, protista kingdom has also joined. Protista means such kind of unicellular eukaryotic organisms. That means here we can understand that Arndt Hegel, who has actually proposed the three kingdom classification system, he has segregated the organisms in three different kingdoms based on the presence or absence of the cell structure or cell number because he has told that in case of protista all the cell, cellular number is only one single cell but in case of plantae and animalia cell number is more than one because they are multicellular so based on the number of cells he has categorized the kingdom unicellular within that he has kept protista and he has made another category that is multicellular within which he has kept plantae and animalia next after Arndt, Stegel, few and other scientists, they have researched and they have proposed the next kingdom classification that is four kingdom classification system. There with Monera, sorry, with Protista, Plantae and Animalia, they have joined Monera also. And this specific four kingdom classification system was co proposed by Copeland. Why he has created four different kingdoms? Based on the feature that is uh, cell type or based on the cellular organization. He has actually created two categories. One is prokaryotic cell category, another one is eukaryotic cell category. And there he has kept Monera within the prokaryotic cell category and protista, plantae and animalia he has kept within the eukaryotic cell category. 
So based on this specific feature that is the cellular organization or body organization, he has created four different kingdoms or he has proposed four different kingdoms, Monera, Protista, Planty and Animalia. Based on which feature he has proposed this four kingdom classification system based on cellular organization or body organization. Next, the modern classification mechanism that is the five kingdom classification mechanism what we are following till now also this specific classification mechanism or system was proposed by the scientist Robert Harding Whitaker or R.H. Whitaker. According to him, he has segregated the organisms into five different kingdoms based on few features. Whatever the features he has proposed, first of all cell structure, whether the cell is eukaryotic or prokaryotic, based on that he has classified the organisms into five different kingdoms. Next, body organization. Body organization means cell, cell number as well as cell type. Both has been considered. Both have been considered in this body organization point. So based on that also, he has segregated. Mode of nutrition. Which kind of nutrition is is the organism showing autotrophic or the organism is showing heterotrophic mode of nutrition? Based on that also, he has categorized these five kingdoms. Next, reproduction. Obviously, which kind of reproduction is shown by these organisms? Asexual or sexual or vegetative. Based on that reproductive mode, also he has segregated these five kingdoms. And also, phylogenetic classification. That means he has classified the organisms by creating or by determining the relationship of the organisms with their ancestors. So that is commonly known as phylogenetic classification system. So by studying the phylogenetic classification, that means by studying the relationship in between existing organism and extinct organism, he has done or he has proposed this five kingdom classification system. So that's why this five kingdom classification is a well modified version of the classification system. So for that reason, we are following this. But students, one thing I want to say here that five kingdom classification system is also getting obsolete day by day because today or nowadays we are following six and seven kingdom classification system. So that has been getting more advanced. The Monera has been segregated into multiple categories again for and that has created actually, actually the six kingdom and seven kingdom classification system. So five kingdom classification we are not following that I can't say we are following but with the six and seven kingdom classification system also we are following now. Now I am coming for just the differences in between these five kingdom uh, organisms or five kingdom uh, five kingdoms. Whatever the different uh, features or whatever the differences are actually present in these five kingdoms. Let's let's see. First one, I have taken the point cell type. Based on the cell type, I can say or you also can see that Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantia, and Animalia they have been segregated. Specifically, if you consider Monera, we all know that Monera is containing bacterial cells. So obviously, bacterial cells are all containing primitive nucleus. That's why they are all prokaryotic. But starting from Protista and up to Animalia, all specific organisms are containing the true nucleus containing cell, which nucleus is containing nuclear membrane. Nucleolus is present, double membrana cell hormonal is present in between those specific organisms automatically starting from protista to animalia all organisms are kept within the category that is eukaryotic cell category. Cell type you can consider this one as a body organization also this point. Cellular number that is based on the number of cells also Robert Harding Whitaker has segregated the five different kingdoms. How? Specifically in case of Monera and Protista, if you will see, maybe the Monera is prokaryotic and in Protista is, is eukaryotic, but they are unicellular, that is single cell containing. But starting from fungi to animalia, if you will study, you will see that they are all multicellular organ organisms. That means the various kinds of uh, organ level or tissue level or systems or organizations it has come. So obviously, Based on cell number also these five kingdoms have been segregated. Next one, based on the presence or absence of the cell wall. Specifically we all know that monera, that is a bacterial cell, they are containing the cell wall outside of the plasma membrane or cell membrane. And that cell wall is commonly made up of a substance that is commonly known as peptidoglycan. What is peptidoglycan? It is actually a combination of polysaccharide and amino acid. Polysaccharide is a complex carbohydrate or complex sugar and amino acid. So when the polysaccharide and amino acid automatically the peptidoglycan structure has created. So in case of Monera or bacterial cell, this cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan. In case of protista, if you consider cell wall structure, truly it's not present. But for few organisms, pellicle, pellicle named body covering is present. So for them, cell wall is absent, but pellicle type or pellicle named body covering is present. That is hard body covering. Next, 
fungi. In case of fungi, if you consider, obviously they contain cell wall and that is commonly made up of chitin. Chitin is a such kind of complex carbohydrate or polysaccharide. Next, if you consider planty, that is also containing the cell wall and that cell wall is actually made up of cellulose and cellulose is also a complex sugar made up of multiple glucose units. And the last one, if you consider animalia, obviously they don't have the cell wall because they have only cell membrane or plasma membrane as a covering membrane, extra cell wall is not needed by, the, by them. If you now come to the next point that is the nuclear membrane, already in the first point we have discussed that which specific cells are prokaryotic, obviously nuclear membrane will be absent for them. But which organisms or which specific type of uh, kingdoms are containing, uh, they are eukaryotic organisms, obviously they should contain the nuclear membrane. So as Morena, their nuclear membrane is absent, that's why their nucleus is scattered within the cytoplasm. That's why that is commonly known as nucleoid. But starting from protista to animalia, all organisms have nuclear membrane because they have well developed, well structured nucleus with the various other complex structures present in the cell. Last point here we can see that is a mode of nutrition. If you study about the mode of nutrition starting from monera to animalia, you will see that in case of monera, they are showing autotrophic mode of nutrition. Why? Because few of the bacterial cells are containing chlorophyll, which are commonly known as bacteriochlorophyll. So due to presence of that bacteriochlorophyll, bacteria can obviously perform the photosynthesis. So they can be autotrophic like the plants. As well as most of the bacterial cells, except these autotrophic bacterial cells, most of the bacterial cells, they are heterotrophic because they are absorbing nourishment or nutrients from the host body. So obviously they can be heterotrophic. And within heterotrophic specifically, they are parasitic. Specifically, they are parasitic, okay? Because they are actually acting as a parasites. They are causing diseases. Next, if you go for the protista, the mode of nutrition, you can see here in case of them also autotrophic and heterotrophic. Why? Because protista organisms are also some, sometimes containing chlorophyll. Okay, like the euglena, they are containing chlorophyll. So they can perform photosynthesis as well as they can be also heterotrophic also. Because they are also showing the type of nutrition where they are not making the food, they are dependent on the others for taking the food. So obviously they can be heterotrophic also. And in case of protro pro protista also, heterotrophic mode of nutrition means parasiting. Okay, parasiting mode of nutrition they are showing. Come to the uh, fungi, in case of fungi specifically or mostly or for every fungi you can see the mode of nutrition is saprophytic. Why? Because they can't perform the autotrophic mode of nutrition because they don't have the chlorophyll pigment. So under heterotrophic also they are actually showing the saprophytic mode of nutrition. Why? Because they are mostly dependent on dead animal and plant bodies for obtaining the nourishment or nutrients. So obviously they can be considered as a uh, saprophytic mode of nutrition showing organism. If you go for the plants or planty, all of the plants, mostly all of the plants, they are showing autotrophic mode of nutrition they are, because they have the chlorophyll pigment and for that reason they can perform photosynthesis. But few plants are there. As an example, insectivorous plants. For them, obviously, you can write here, the plants can be also heterotrophic because they are just absorbing the essential nutrients from those insects' body. So automatically, they can be heterotrophic. And the next, Animalia, in case of animalia, mostly they are heterotrophic, they can be saprophytic, they can be parasitic, they can be symbiotic, they can be holozoic. So any kind of mode of heterotrophic nutrition they are shown, they are actually showing this specific animalia. Okay, so I think the mode of nutrition for each and every kingdom is very much clear to each and every one. Next we will be discussing about the special features of kingdom monera. Now, that means now we are entering within the kingdom monera. In this video we are entering within the kingdom monera, I am saying. Uh, but in the next video, we will be seeing about the classification of Kingdom Monera entirely. So just I am starting the Kingdom Monera. Basic features of all kingdoms we have studied. Now some special features only for Kingdom Monera we have to study. First special feature is reproduction. That means whatever the type of reproductions are shown by Kingdom Monera. That means bacterial cells. Bacterial cells can perform asexual mode of new, uh, reproduction. Obviously that means they can perform the process that is binary fission. That means a single mother cell is getting divided into two daughter cells. And like that they are reproducing generation after generation. Okay. So asexual they, they can reproduce as well as they can show the sexual mode of reproduction. How? They can perform conjugation, transformation and transduction. What are these things? These things are actually conjugation, transformation and transduction. These three are under the sexual mode of reproduction. Where main target of the bacterial cell is to transfer the genetic material from one specific individual to the next generation individual. So how they are doing that? It is a conjugation. If you think 
two bacterial cells are coming very close and they are adhering with each other. One specific bacterial cell has the plasmid DNA that is the uh, genetic material that plasmid DNA will be transferred to the another bacterial cell which specific bacterial cell doesn't contain it. So conjugation is the mechanism where both of the bacterial cells are adhering with each other and by that by making a tubular structure that is commonly known as conjugation tube from one bacterial cell the plasmid DNA or the genetic material is getting transferred to the another bacteria which doesn't have that. Next. Uh, if you consider that transformation, transformation is the mechanism where one specific bacterial cell is again providing the plasmid DNA to the another bacterial cell which doesn't have this kind of genetic material through the culture media. Suppose you have prepared a culture media of the bacterial cell where few bacterial cells are containing plasmid DNA, few bacterial cells doesn't contain. So on that time, which specific uh, bacterial cells are containing plasmid DNA? they are commonly known as F plus bacteria, fertility plus. Why fertility plus? Because they have that plasmid DNA. The, for that reason they are fertile. But which bacteria also doesn't contain? They are infertile. That means they are commonly known as F minus. So from the F plus bacteria to the F minus bacteria, the plasmid DNA will be transferred. Through which? Through culture media where you are just cultivating those bacterial cells or you are just uh, rearing those bacterial cells. Next transduction. Transduction is another mode of sexual reproduction where from one bacterial cell specifically from the F plus bacterial cell to the F minus bacterial cell the plasmid DNA will be transferred but but that will be transferred by a specific type of organism that is bacteriophage. So bacteriophage is taking the charge here to carry the genetic material from the F plus to the F minus. So in this three kind of uh, reproductive modes we have seen one thing the transfer of the genetic material is actually the target. So when the target is transfer of the genetic material obviously this kind of uh, reproductions commonly we can say obviously as a sexual mode of reproduction. Next thing is that if you consider the excretion in case of bacterial cell you will see that in case of bacterial cell they are storing the excretory materials or waste products within some specific vacuole like or vesicle like structure. Those are commonly known as inclusion bodies and within those inclusion bodies when they are keeping those excretory materials as a store matter according to requirement those inclusion bodies are fusing with the plasma membrane and those excretory materials or waste materials will be just diffused out out diffused out by the process of exocytosis exocytosis is the process through which those specific materials will be diffused out Third, respiration. Mostly they are containing cell membrane after that cell wall is present as a protecting membrane. So cell membrane or plasma membrane is actually performing as a respiratory structure and that, that specific plasma membrane through which the respiration is happening, that is always happening through the diffusion process. Okay, always the exchange of the gases in between environment and the organism is happening. And the last point of the last point of the spatial feature that is the locomotion. In the locomotion point you can see they are mostly locomoting by the help of locomotory or like cilia, flagella. Sometimes they are using pili and fimbri also. Pili and fimbri also they are using. Here I am writing pili and fimbri. These specific structures uh, are specifically responsible or required for reproduction, specifically for the sexual reproduction during conjugation mainly. But after that also this pili and fimbri structure is also helping the bacterial cell for the locomotion with cilia and flagella. Cilia and flagella is the main locomotory organ with that these two are also helping as an accessory locomotory organ. So I think this is the introductory part of the chapter that is the classification system. So with that the five different kingdoms whatever their uh, differences in their basic features as well as the special feature of the kingdom Monera I think you have understood very nicely. I think uh, you have enjoyed this video a lot also. Thank you.